coming through sound holes. Hello. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I'm Bill Hurtado with Transwest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. Today, we're gonna look at our latest acquisition here. It's really nice. This is a 2022 Tiffin Phaeton 40IH is the number on this one. Um, couple things about this as we move around. Uh, this is built on Tiffin's own Power Glide chassis. And that Power Glide chassis, they started building in 2007. Uh, it's a really nice enhancement. It's optional on the Phaeton product. Uh, the standard would be the Freightliner, so this would be uh, their option. A couple of things that they did on this unit was they moved the fuel tank further forward. They felt like that gave it a little bit better balance with this long wheelbase. Um, this frame that is 100% built by Tiffin uh, is put together with huck bolts. Huck bolts are a permanent fastener, so it's nothing that's ever gonna loosen up. Um, it's equally strong, but no welding done on this chassis whatsoever. As we all know, welding can weaken steel if it's not done exactly right. Uh, so very nice setup the way they did that. They also put on custom tuned Bilstein shocks for the weight of this unit. So it's a perfect match and it drives like a dream. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, the air system. I find this to be uh, a, a, an important factor on this. Typically your air systems work with a three valve type process. A three valve process is going to adjust air fore and aft and then side to side. Um, and what it does is independently side to side on the front, side to side on the rear, and then fore and aft. So you get hit with a big wind on this thing the level sensors are going to react so that it holds you steady. Uh, you take a turn very fast. It'll dump the air on the, on the high side and increase it on the low side. So it stands up more and they're, they're trying to go after that BMW drive, if you will. You know, they want it to stand up and be firm on the road. Um, I think Tiffin took it one step further. Instead of having a three valve process, they use four. So each wheel is independently set up with its own air valves. Um, so equally reactive in speed, but very nice because having that coupled with independent front suspension up here, and then the four valve system uh, makes for a, just an optimal ride. It's really, really nice what they've done. When they complete the chassis, before it leaves the chassis shop and goes over to have the house put on, all of their uh, power glide chassis are dyno tuned. So we actually have a dynamometer right here at Transwest. So we do the same thing, but very few manufacturers dyno tune their chassis or anybody's chassis before they start building the coach on there. So another nice upgrade that they've done. All right, so let's talk about something else here. Um, this unit is 41 foot, four inches long. It's 101 inches wide. You know, the maximum is 102. So they just snuck in there. So it's still considered a wide body and you can feel it inside. It's really nice. The total height of this thing is 13 foot, three inches. Now you're thinking, well, that's a little taller than a lot of them. I've seen 12, 10, 12, 11. Yes, you have. It's because of the Power Glide chassis that this overall height is raised up a little bit. But in doing so, they've given you seven inches of extra height down in the storage bays down here. So that's a really nice trade-off. The whole time they've maintained the 83 inch ceiling height inside. So it's a really nice match. I like what they've done. People really like having the extra storage down here. And as you can see, this particular unit has two full pass-through slide-out trays, goes out either end. All right, outside entertainment. 
looks to me like you've got about a 37 inch TV there. I don't know that exactly, but you know, it kind of looks like it. it's bigger than a 32, smaller than a 40. You go, you figure it out. Um, it's got its own sound bar outside. So that's really nice. Instead of having the clunky speakers built in here, sound bars sound so much better. And I think all of you know that because most of you have sound bars at home now. This area right here is blocked off on purpose because this is where your holding tanks are. Your fresh water, your black water, your gray water are all accessible from this panel right here. So when the service techs need to get in there and do anything uh, up to a full replacement, it's real easy to get things out this direction. So they made it nice for you down the road. One extra pass-through. You don't see that very often. Um, usually your pass-throughs are only up in the front up there. And you may not have noticed, but when I step back here, that light turned on automatically. So it's got a motion sensor on it. And that's news to me. I just noticed that myself for the first time. This thing's got Michelin tires all the way around. And it's got the really nice Durabrite um, aluminum wheels on all four corners. I love Durabrite because it stays bright and shiny. I've seen them 20 years old and they still look fantastic. So big plus there. Real small compartment right here. That's gonna be for, I would call your wet storage stuff. Maybe, uh, you know, oil and uh, power steering fluid, uh, extra things like that, that you don't mind getting dirty inside this area right here. Okay, so this compartment right here is your chassis electrical. And you've got your uh, mechanical switch to turn off the chassis batteries, and then two 31 series batteries for engine start. Just like everybody else, but look how easy it is to get to everything. They did a nice job with that. And then moving back a little bit further, there's more chassis electrical back here. Uh, in case of a catastrophic short or something, you've got these huge breakers that are very easy to reset. And then this is the bonus. This is something I want really, really bad. Let me show you how this works. This back here is called a hydro lift and it comes with this motor home because the previous owner, uh, they had this installed. Um, if you Google hydro lift, you can learn all about this thing. They're very expensive. They have a thousand pound capacity. Um, they are super simple to use. When this drops down to the ground, your motorcycle goes on. You've got multiple tie off points going all the way around. Very heavy duty, really nice system. And I'm gonna display it for you because I love these things. I've loved these things for a lot of years. So real simple with my buttons, I can go up and down. Now that I'm up, I'm gonna move my lock out of the way slightly. You don't hear a lot of racket with this thing. The control unit for the hydraulic pump is over on the other side. But how easy is that? Now, the, I want one of these because my motorcycle, which is 760 some pounds, I could roll right up onto this thing and start tying it down. I wouldn't even have to ask the wife for help. Uh, this is a nice setup. And I've always wanted to take my motorcycle with me on trips, but it's just not practical unless I have a trailer behind there, which I'm not really into doing. So fast, easy, comes up out of your way. We're gonna let it back down a little bit so the lock holds in place and it's rock solid now. Hydro lift, I love it. It truly is a big bonus on this thing. All right, so you got a 10,000 pound tow capacity on this thing because that's the difference between GVWR and GCWR. In most cases, it'll actually tow more than that, but that's the way they rate these things. And it comes with a 10,000 pound hitch. Well, now you've got the hydro lift on here, uh, which is taking up a small portion of the tongue weight on there. So now 
we have an 8,000 pound tow rating, okay? So if you were to figure out a way to put a long stinger or what we call a draw bar in the original hitch and bring that out here, you'd, you'd be back to your 10,000 pound tow rating. Not, not too many people pulling a car and a motorcycle though. You may be the first, but you can do it. So that's good. All right, that's that uh, hydraulic unit I was talking about for the hydro lift right there. So we, I didn't even hear the thing running. It, it's, it's that quiet. Over here, this is pretty simple. You've got your def tank, very easy to get to. You've got an air port supply, so you can have high pressure air, air up your tires, things like that. Um, these are uh, tank drains for the air tanks on here that I was talking about. So your air tanks build up condensation over time and you just need to get the moisture out of there periodically. This does have a very easy to use 50 amp service that has the power retract. Very nice, simple to use. You notice on the wheels back here, the valve caps look like they're very big. Those are part of the TPMS. That's a tire pressure monitor system. And I'm gonna go through that a little bit more with you when we get up to the dash on this thing, which is quite impressive. Utility station. Looks like a lot of them, but there are some nice features here. For example, um, you've got your uh, uh, LED display back here showing your tank levels, full water filtration system, easy access to your water pump, and yes, this is a heated zone down here. Um, your black tank can connect up here and you have a macerator built in. So the macerator will grind up that stuff, you know, and send it out as far as you want to go. Your fresh water connection, very easy at the campground. This is also on a power retract reel. And then hot and cold running water outside. This valve up here is pretty common nowadays, but it's priceless. So you don't have to do a gravity fill on your tank, which you have a 100 gallon fresh water supply. When you're hooked up to city water, you merely turn that valve down. You wait for it to come shooting out underneath. That means your tank is full. Turn it back to the normal position and you're on your way. So easy peasy. All right, here's the other two pass throughs. Um, this is not an all electric coach. It does have a, um, uh, um, the, oh boy. Um, the water heater on this thing is the Truma Aqua Glow. That took me a minute to remember that. Uh, that's over on the other side. We passed it up, but um, su super efficient and unlimited hot water as long as you want it. And then it's got dual furnaces here. So on the control panel, again, which we look at inside, you can keep the front and rear different temperatures with heat right there. And then we have three zones on air conditioning, which I'll get to when we get in there. Okay, so we have six six volt batteries. And these are, because of six of them, these are wired both in parallel and series to give you two banks of 12 volts. So excellent capacity on 12 volts right here. That coupled with the uh, uh, solar up on the roof uh, gives you the optimal system. Now it does have a 2000 watt inverter, which is somewhere, I didn't come across it as we were going through, um, but it's in there and uh, it's the true sine wave. So you can use electronic equipment with that too. Okay, very simple on chassis electrical up here. Um, I don't know if Tiffin put that little sign in or if the previous owner did, but it's important to know that you don't want to be spraying this compartment out. Um, very simple to access resettable breakers on here in case one of these conditions occurs. And then you also have another airport up front over here, which is super nice. So good looking system. Everything is labeled as to what it controls. Gotta love that. 
you notice the fuel fill up here. This is much further forward than we're used to seeing on much coaches. And that's because Tiffin mounted that fuel tank up further this direction. Their engineers have determined it gives it a better ride having that balance between heavy engine and transmission back there and all of your fuel and generator up here. Okay, so well done. They did a nice job on that. All right. This thing is equipped with Girard awnings. Um, people in the know do know that Girard is the Bentley of awnings. Um, it has a 10 foot span instead of an eight. It has an anemometer built up there to automatically put itself away in case the wind kicks up too much. Uh, very nice system. And it's coupled with the Girard patio awning right here as well. So we're gonna go inside. Um, as we move in here, I wanted to point out there's a nice little storage drawer for some you know, quick handy tool access. Everything is encased in granite as we go in the doorway here. And then just inside the door right here is a touch screen that we can start turning lights on um, and we can access all kinds of different features here. And you think, well, that's kind of silly. That's really not uh, in, in reach of the passenger. You know, sh he or she can't see that coming around the corner this way. But as you move inside, you'll see they were nice enough to give the passenger one that's very easy to use right next to them. So well thought out. Lighted handle entry over there and over here. All right, so before we do too much more on the front, I wanna go all the way to the back back here and we're gonna work our way forward. A lot of people have been asking me, I want a unit with dual sinks. Okay, great, here it is, you've got them. And nice space in between, you're not jamming each other up very much. And then slide access to your washer and dryer. Good size closet storage in here. And the way that they lighted the bar is very clever because that's right down onto your clothes to help you pick out what you want to wear. I need to do that at home. That's a pretty cool idea. Um, there's a second air conditioner unit back here in the back also, or third, I should say. And then this has a built-in digital safe in here. Oh my gosh, look at that. Safe works. All right. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow and be another one. Okay, you got the electric flush toilet over here and the huge glass shower. Um, I think if this were my unit, I might put one of those little squeegees up. You know, you're supposed to squeegee these after you get out. Uh, but it's really nice size right there. Now, I might as well show you because I'm six foot tall and fairly good size. And I got plenty of room to move around in here. This, this is nice. Very, very nice shower setup. Okay. Every zone has got its own light switches that are digital here. Um, just very simple to use. They go off after a couple of minutes. So they're not in the room out here being on when you're you know, trying to sleep or you have the lights dimmed down low. Same thing over here with the uh, bed setup. You've got the digital touch panel right next to you right there. Actually, both sides. So driver or passenger over here can handle that. USB ports down underneath. And light sconce and everything is handled through those. There's a uh, pretty good storage under the bed. There's the ladder to access the roof. I like not having the ladder come all the way down to the bottom because then you're just inviting, say, kids or somebody to go up there and screw around, possibly fall off, get hurt. Okay. This is what I call command central. And I, I won't bore you with too much on here, but 
we've got a home screen, our lighting, our electrical system, our climate control, slide rooms, settings, and something else. So from the home screen right here, we can start and stop our generator. We can see what our voltages are. We can check our monitor panel and we can handle some of the lights. Um, right now, we can see exactly what our temperatures are, how we're running on those. Uh, this over here, this gold heat floor, this is very cool. I have this in my downstairs bathroom. The tile floor there can get pretty cold. Well, I can turn that switch. I have a dial switch on mine because it's a little older. Um, but I can turn that up and 20 minutes later, that is a toasty warm floor. It's really, really cool. So the same thing here. Underneath the rear half and the front half of this coach are these thin pads that heat up and they warm up this tile. So full heated floor. Um, it's actually pretty efficient too. It doesn't draw a lot of power, but this can get kind of cold, especially if you're barefoot. So that's really nice. Um, into our lighting section right here, you can see I've got every light on right now. Um, so if we were to say, look at the main right here, that turns off quite a few in this area right here. Um, and then I can even do the uh, door, road, and porch lights outside from here. This is looks a little complicated, but it's really pretty simple. So DC power is batteries. EMS is your electrical management station. And then AC power. So AC, DC, and this over here is telling us what's going on. Uh, what's on right now, what's not, what our charge rate is, uh, if there's any blown breakers anywhere, uh, what we have power to and what we don't. Um, so it's really nice. The solar, it tells us exactly what's going on right there. Um, how much power is being pulled off the generator. Of course, if we had uh, line power coming in, it would tell us down there. Uh, but a nice system, keeps track of everything for you. So I do love that. AGS is automatic generator start, and that's a program that you can set so that the generator will come on automatically. You can disable it for different times a day, and you can set it for voltages on your battery. So if your batteries become a little bit low, um, then uh, that thing will automatically kick on, and it has a really fast charge rate, uh, over 60 amps. So that's really nice. Right now, here's how we handle our climate in here. And you notice a furnace in the rear and a furnace in the front, but not in the center of the coach. So we do the rear half or the front half in heat, and then we can do all three areas throughout the coach in air conditioning. And we can also do our floor heat from here, our gold floor heat temperature up and down, whereas the other screen I showed you just merely turns it on and off. Over here, we can handle our slide rooms in the bedroom from here. And when we go to front slides, the thing is gonna tell you right away, hey, this is an emergency switch, so use the ones on the front seat up there, which, of course, you should always do. Uh, and we'll touch upon that in just a sec. Um, you can change the color of the settings in here, uh, on settings also, but you can uh, have different fans. There's four fans throughout the unit, and you can have those on high or low, discharging, intaking, so on and so forth. And then finally, um, yeah, this is the settings mode. So do you want it in Fahrenheit or do you want it in Celsius? So on and so forth. So I tried not to go on too long about that, but it's a cool system. It's really nice. Everything is so easy to, to kind of get to. This is the half bath. Looks like any half bath, but there's a lot of things that you may take for granted here, like a huge medicine cabinet up above the matching granite heart, uh, solid surface countertop over here matches the galley and the master bath. Um, second electric, or this is not an electric toilet, this is a foot flush on this one. But you've got great storage down below and the towel rack built in over here. So nice system, air conditioned, heated, window, exhaust fan. I need this at home. All right. Residential style fridge right here with ice and water in the door. Great freezer capacity in this thing. 
and then I don't know what size this is, but it's big. This is 25 cubic foot. So very, very nice. Okay, this pantry right here. Um, people are usually liking the slide out pantries, you know, that give you lots of storage in a tiny little space because they've utilized this whole depth right here. Um, one thing that they did that was a step further was just this simple little latch on here. It's there. You don't have to worry about it. We've seen them where we have to turn or we have to flip something over. Gaudy looking. This is great. They did a nice job with that. The buffet. I made that up. I don't know what they really call it, but the buffet over here um, has tons of storage in this thing. Very easy for either person to get to. And you notice this has got some really good depth right here. So there's a lot of stuff that can go up on there. Um, you've got AC outlets and USB ports up here. And that brings me to the galley. So right now you do have the nice heavy 18 gauge stainless steel sink and it's big. So if you don't feel like doing dishes, you can hide those for a little while the pull-out faucet, uh, microwave convection combo. That's why you don't have an oven down below. We're back to gas on this thing. Uh, this is the Furion, specifically built for RVs. Supposed to be designed to take all the shaking and bouncing and not fall apart and get hurt. Um, I like having gas on a unit. So many of these nowadays are all electric. Gas is nice. You know, if you're into electricity, that's fine because you got heat pumps in the air conditioners. Um, you've always got your dash heat. Now with the addition of uh, the gas on this unit, you've got two furnaces. Um, most people know how to cook with gas. Uh, the induction cooktops, they can be a little temperamental and they take a little while to learn. Um, but that's good, so that's a nice setup. When I slid out the extension right here, that's when I noticed We've got another AC outlet over here. And then we have another one up here. And then we have another one here with our USBs. And then we have another one over here and another one over here. No question about having enough outlets. This has got more than I've ever seen in, in a coach. So kudos to Tiffin, they did a good job on that. Okay, this is a uh, full-size hide-a-bed that you're used to seeing that just simply pops out. This TV right here, now this one's a little bit bigger. This might be a 50, I'm gonna say. Um, that will retract down, so we expose the window on there. And uh, let me remember where that was. Okay, I raised it a minute ago and I already forgot where it is. That's okay. And you know, we've got a switch right next to us over here too, but um, we've got two positions that we can do that from. Doesn't matter if you're not watching TV, you've got the view out your patio side over here. So let's see here. Finally, we've got the theater seating in this one. And this theater seating is pretty nice. So it's got the kick out down below. In fact, I'll give you a a full test drive right here. Um, this thing will lay down pretty low. And if that's too much, then your other control right here will give us our head brought up to where we can watch TV comfortably. It's really quite nice. So let's say it's nighttime. I like what they've done in here. They've got a lot of options on lighting. They've got indirect lighting in behind areas. They've got the sconce lighting. They've got lighting down underneath the galley over here. Things that aren't right in your face, but you can still have a nice glow through the whole thing. It's good to keep on when you're traveling down the road too, because the passenger may want to get up and go to the fridge, go to the restroom. They can see everything. 
and none of those lights are going to interfere with the driver. So that, that part's really nice too. All right, um, just a little review. I told you it had 100 gallons of fresh water. It also has a 100 gallon gray tank and a 55 gallon black tank. So good ample amounts of uh, uh, water storage there. And then 35 gallon propane tank, that's huge. Uh, three air conditioners, they all have heat pumps. I showed you the zones over there. Uh, the Truma continuous water heater, the Aqua Glow. I should have looked at my list. I'd have remembered it faster when I was outside. And I told you about the 2000 watt inverter. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what Tiffin has done up here on the Power Glide chassis. Everybody's gone to a digital screen, um, but I think Tiffin may have taken it just a little bit further. So, oh, this is really cool too. I, I'm sure the guy just added that on, but boy, is it nice. Okay, so on our screen right here, um, obviously everything is very easy to see and we can brighten and darken this. But over here, I have a control over on my left side. And, to highlight a group. and that's gonna tell me I've got the uh, navigation going, thank you. Okay, so I can adjust my brightness up and down from here as you can see and then multiple controls going through this thing um, regular settings what colors i may want on there there's my trip meter the tpms that i was talking about outside is on all six wheels so it tells us exactly what our thing is here so look at this outside dual over here it's about six pounds higher so that one might you know if you want to keep things even at this level right here, it's not a huge difference, but I would probably go out there and bleed a little bit off just to keep everything kind of nice and simple. Um, you can tell you what your accelerator position is right here. And that'll also work when you have your cruise control on, which coincidentally, this does have the adaptive cruise control. That'll keep you a certain distance away from the cars in front of you, whatever you decide to set. And then uh, on your, uh, there's your adaptive cruise. So that kind of summarizes that whole thing right there. Um, we've put in, uh, or rather Tiffin has put in two screens over here. So they're keeping things separated. Um, so this is really good for security. You can have the whole thing, just your backup back there, but it's kind of nice to see down the sides and not have to integrate it in with the turn signals over here. So multiple positions you can do with your screen over there. And then you can also set up your navigation here. Very easy for me to just glance over and see that. I love having a nice big screen. The things that I want to see, unlike the stereo, I wanna see behind me, I wanna see down the sides, I wanna see my navigation. That's why this screen is so big over here. All right, so uh, just a couple other things that are pretty cool on this. You do have automatic traction control. Uh, if you need that, that'll keep it from slipping if you're driving in snowy areas. Um, you've got both a solar shade and a night shade up here. So this is nice, you know, at night or rather during the day, you can have this down, people can't see in. Um, the night shade will give you full coverage right there, but this is also really nice when you're say driving uh, east early in the morning or west late in the day and that sun is right down on the horizon. You can, you can bring that thing down, block the sun, I can see down the road for miles still and continue on. I don't know about you, but I've had to pull over before um, because of the sun and just kind of wait it out a little bit. And I wanna keep going. We can adjust our pedals down here in and out. And then both seats are multi-function eight-way power seats. Uh, that particular one has the lounge feature because both of these seats will face the living area back that way. Um, I think we've got a pretty good feel for what this thing has. I don't want to sound too redundant, but of course it does have all the other things like the power mirrors and the heated mirrors. Um, the uh, 
Oh, cell phone chargers on both sides. This one here drops in right here. The passenger has one that just sets down over there. Uh, oh, let me do the bed. Thank you, I forgot all about that. Okay, so sleeping. This sleeps five. Two in the master, two in the living area right here, and then a single bed up overhead. And this is very easy to operate. Simply drops down, it's got the little gas charge prop so it's not gonna get away from you. And then the ladder extension under the bed, right there to climb in. So not bad, it's actually pretty comfy. Real simple to put away. Because of our four gas charge props right here, it's real simple to lift up and then nice and solid locking into place. Okay. I think, I think we may have pretty well covered it. So hopefully I gave you a good representation on this thing. If I failed you in any way or if you realize this is probably the way you'd want to go. 22 model, 3,600 miles on it. All the bugs have been worked out already. That's the best way to buy an RV. You know, I love brand new. There's nothing wrong with that. But all the little things that may have gone wrong have already happened. They've been fixed. The thing is 100% dialed in and it's ready to go. So this is how you get it or get more information on this thing. I would like you to call me on my cell phone would be the best way to reach me because it's on my golf cart right now, but it's usually in my pocket. Um, you can text me. You can send me an email if you like, and I'll get to you as quick as I can. Um, this is my desk phone at my office. And if I'm sitting at my desk, by all means, you can call directly to me right there. But whether you call me, text me, email me, or send me a smoke signal, I don't care. Just call me on this thing because this unit is fantastic. It is virtually brand new. Um, you're gonna be able to save a lot of money and you're gonna drive away knowing that it's completely dialed in and ready to go. So, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.